Time now for another trip down sci-fi memory lane with a few more shows from back in the day, beginning with a show I came to a little bit late, Charmed. I started watching this in and around the third season. I watched about three seasons and then gradually went off the show, to be honest. It was, and still remains, an extremely popular show. It began in 1998 and finished in 2006. It was created by Constance M. Burge and told the story of the three Halliwell sisters, Prue, played by Shannon Doherty, Piper, played by Holly Marie Combs, and Phoebe, played by Alyssa Milano. Three witches with extraordinary abilities, who use their combined power of three to fight evil and save people from demons and terrible forces. It was the perfect companion series to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, though was perhaps more geared towards a female audience. Doherty left after the third season, and was replaced by Rose McGowan, who played a new sister named Paige. They lived in a Victorian house, and one day they discovered a book in the attic that explains they are the most powerful witches in the world. Prue can move things with her mind, Piper can freeze time, Phoebe can see the future, and Paige also has telekinesis through a kind of teleporting ability. They were also joined by secondary cast members, some of whom came and went throughout the series, though Dorian Gregory, Brian Krause, and Julian McMahon were the most prominent secondary regulars in the show. The series ran for a considerable eight seasons, with a total of 178 episodes, putting it up there with the likes of Star Trek The Next Generation. The show was generally light and upbeat in tone, but with mild horror elements. Visually, it's held up very well over the years. It was also another example of a show from that era that had a really great opening credits theme song. How Soon Is Now, a song originally by The Smiths, but this time performed by Love Spit Love, a beautifully updated cover, and it went really well with the opening titles. Now, I didn't know this until recently, so you'll have to excuse my ignorance, but the show was rebooted in recent years, and this reboot ran for four seasons. Charmed 2018, because that's the year it started, and it finished in 2022, is again about three witches, but this time in the Vera family. Macy, played by Madeleine Mantock, Mel, played by Melanie Diaz, and Maggie, played by Sarah Jeffrey. The series casting was changed to be more diverse and inclusive, including having representation of LGBT characters. Anyway, it's interesting to observe the differences in ratings between the two versions of Charmed on websites like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. It appears that there was more love for the original version of the series. Given the general quality of reboots these days, one can hardly be all that surprised. Now, moving on to another show that I'd heard of for many years but never seemed to find the time to sit down and actually watch. Well, I recently have watched Nowhere Man from 1995, which many of you have recommended to me. This is a show I can highly recommend if you like intense, conspiracy-driven sci-fi thrillers with an X-Files kind of paranoia vibe. A brilliant, ingenious, and also terrifying concept. It was created by Lawrence Herzig and stars Bruce Greenwood, who you'll remember later in movies like National Treasure, Book of Secrets, Star Trek 2009, and Into Darkness, where he played Christopher Pike. Here, Greenwood plays a photojournalist named Thomas Vale, who has his own photography studio where he showcases his works. One evening, while having a meal with his wife, he leaves the table, goes to the bathroom, and returns to the table in the restaurant to discover that his wife has left and another couple are seated there. What he discovers is that suddenly his entire life has just been erased. His wife and friends don't know who he is. His wife is just married to another man. She has no memory of Thomas. His bank cards don't work. He simply doesn't exist on paper anymore. And he's being chased by some shadowy government agency who want to get their hands on a negative of a photo that he took in South America where several men were being hanged. This is the reason he believes his life has been erased. Thomas is on the run, travelling across the country, investigating what's happened to him and why, chasing down leads and trying to stay one step ahead of his pursuers. 
The series has a kind of fugitive feel about it in that respect. But there's something very believable about the concept as well. Thomas is essentially being gaslit on a gargantuan scale, and he's not the only one who suffered this fate. I mean, if you can't trust your memories or your perception of reality, then you obviously will question your sanity. Could something like this be possible? Can a person be completely unpersoned and have their life erased with no records that they ever existed if every paper trail has been eliminated and their own friends and family have been coerced and intimidated into silence? Or in the case of Thomas, is there something more going on here, something even more sinister? There's a major twist in the final episode, and the answers do eventually arrive, and they are, by themselves, even more disturbing. But there was certainly possibilities for a second season. Nowhere Man is a great single-season show, but there were more stories to explore, if only it had continued. Finally, we're going to talk about another show, Earth Final Conflict, one of two concepts created by Gene Roddenberry that were only made after he died. The second, of course, being Andromeda, which I've previously discussed in another video in this series. Earth Final Conflict was a very cool concept. It ran for five seasons from 1997 to 2002. Roddenberry originally thought of the title Battleground Earth, but that was considered too similar to the 2000 film Battlefield Earth, that was in development at the time. Anyone else remember that? Work of art? An alien race named the Talons came to Earth a few years ago and they've brought with them all manner of technological and medical advances in the name of peace, apparently. The Earth is a practical utopia at this point, but all seems too good to be true in the eyes of a small and growing resistance movement who becomes skeptical of the Talons' true intentions. Essentially, it's like a slow invasion and humanity is being killed by kindness. Those who ask inconvenient questions don't last too long, as they seem to always suffer mysterious accidents. The main character for season one is William Boone, played by Kevin Kilner, and he believes that the Talons are plotting something diabolical behind the scenes. So humanity was basically bought off with shiny pretty things from the invaders, while they slowly and covertly took over without them realising it. The cast changed quite considerably over the years because of contractual issues, which is never good for a show, and means that new characters have to constantly be introduced every couple of seasons or so, which really disrupts the energy. Ultimately, by the last season, the Talon threat is defeated, and in season 5, a new alien race are introduced as the principal bad guys. But the show's best years were behind it at that point. Once again, this show is another example of a series with a great, memorable, a very otherworldly opening musical theme, which I really liked. Again, the opening credits from shows in the 90s and early 2000s were really good with some great soundtracks. They just don't make them like they used to anymore. So that about does it for today's trip down sci-fi memory lane. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If there's any other series that you'd like me to talk about, I have talked about quite a few at this point. So you can check out other videos in this series. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. The Dave Cullen Show is made possible by you, my generous subscribers. If you'd like to support my work, head on over to my subscribe star linked below in the description box. And for a pledge of as little as $1 per month, you can help to keep the show going. I'm also doing one-to-one -one monthly subscriber chats. Thanks again. Take care.